I'm from the Jewish community and I was really disturbed to see you tweet in support of what Katie Hopkins said, referring to London under Sadiq Mayor as Lundestan, suggesting that, you know, our Muslim friends um, and neighbours are taking over London. So I was wondering, with that in mind, how are you planning to represent um, the great Muslim community of London? Hello, Lauren. Well, actually, I'm glad you brought this up because... When I retweet it, oh, no, I don't think, I think I liked it. I, I don't know. This was a long time ago. I That wasn't in my mind. And I'm glad you've given me the opportunity to say. I, I, I think that, you did. You, you retweeted. Did I retweet? Kate, Kate, I have no well, idea. It's rather concerning. I have to tell you what you did. But anyway, and apologies for the language. Katie Hopkins called the London mayor, quotes, our nipple height mayor of Londinistan. Mm. And you replied, thank you, Katie. Mm. I, Why? I, I can't remember doing that. Probably because I'm so. You can't fast. remember doing that. No, of course not. The Nick, I I tweet or I used to. Do you all remember the time. liking a tweet that had the language "It's never too late to get London back" with a picture of Enoch Powell? Yes, and I've explained that it's it's never too late, which is what I'm saying to you. It is not too late to make London better again. We've got traffic jams left, right, and centre. We've got Do the you, ULES expansion. Are you a there fan are, of Enoch Powell? No, of course not. The, well, what, why, why, I don't understand. There was a picture of him and you liked that tweet. I know. If you're, a, if you're a serial tweeter, you tend to go through liking all sorts of things and you sometimes read things and don't see it. If anybody is offended, then obviously I would apologise. But going You back, don't think... You can't see why people would be offended with I, that. You I say, can you say now if anyone been, is yeah. offended. Well, it, I have to explain to you the offence? No, because, because it, wasn't, it, it wasn't intended. And, and, and this is the thing... If anybody when you was... called Gemma Collins a stupid, fat, blonde woman, was that intended? I was asking a question to Twitter as to who who is this person. And, yeah, I mean, I've apologised for that as well. I mean, they will, people will throw these tweets at me and I accept it. And if I've offended anybody, I apologise. You keep going... saying if as if you can't realise that there is offence, Susan Hall. Be- because... Calling, I'm sorry to say it again. Calling someone a stupid, fat, blonde woman, liking a picture of Enoch Powell, talking about the mayor, I apologise again, a nipple height mayor. You seem surprised people are offended. Some people are and some people aren't. Those that are offended... Um, I'm, I didn't intend oh. to cause any offence at all. But going to, back to Lauren... To the broader have... question, can you represent Muslims? Can you represent women? Can you represent people? Susan Hall. Yes, of course I can. Explain and going to Lauren back how. To, and going back to Lauren, yes, of course please. we've got an incredible um, Muslim community. We really do. Um, and uh, if, they've, if they've... I go back to saying if. To whoever was offended, I most sincerely apologise. I spent a lot of time in mosques, etc., um, because in London we're very, very lucky. We've got a, a really good multicultural uh, community out there and it, it brings extra depth to London. Lauren, quick response from you before we move on. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm not, I'm not quite convinced. I think anyone in London from any minority group should be worried. All right. Um, I understand that your uh, one policy is to scrap the ULEZ on day one you, if you come into office. So what do you propose to do in, as an alternative to deal with the, tackle, uh, the capital's lethal air pollution problem? OK. Hello, Dave. Thank you for calling in. Um, the ULEZ expansion is what I would scrap on day one, not the uh, original ULEZ or even the one that goes to the north and south circular, the expansion of the ULEZ. And you live in Harrow, as I do, so you'll know that we do not have the um, the transport offer, the public transport offer that they do in central London. So if we look to see if there are any pockets of uh, in, uh, bad air quality. I have found £50 million in an environmental budget in City Hall that we would put the councils would bid into to rectify what is causing that hot spot, if you like. But it, it's, for whatever Sadiq Khan said, his own impact assessment showed that the uh, extended ULEs would make virtually no difference at all to air quality. So it's just nothing but a tax grab from him. The, uh, the, the commissioner of the TFL admitted that they had put £200 million into the budget from fines that they will make from people that um, have to pay their £12.50 and the, and the fines, of course. And that's nothing but a tax grab on poorer people. Let's just clarify. So there'd be no statutory consultation? No, As of day one. No, no. If people vote for me, they will get and the uh, ULA's, uh, the ULA's expansion will be stopped on day one. So okay. So no cause. And the one hundred and fifty million pounds it's cost to date, 
will be written off. No, the cameras, uh, and this is slightly controversial, I absolutely give my word, I would not use the cameras for pay per mile because, of course, that's where he's going with all of Can this. Can you prove that? What, that I won't do no, it? No, no, that he's going for... Pe- that he being said he can't, he's going Fair to pay enough. for mile. Uh, he's actually employing people to look at the software to do it at the moment. It's been admitted in actual committee meetings. What would you use the cameras for? I would give them to the police. They've all got ANPR, obviously, which is automatic number plate reading. And it's a, a massive tool for the police to know if they've got somebody they're looking for in what? a vehicle, they could recognise whether they were leaving or entering London. What about the budgetary shortfall? I understand ULEZ is expected to provide £200 million a year for TfL. Some of that will obviously will stay because you're not getting the whole of it, but what about the shortfall? How will you make the money up? The, uh, the Mayor has got a £21 billion budget. It's a massive budget. He tends to waste money. We're working on a document at the moment to see where things could be uh, reduced, if you like, or, or removed. At the end of the day, Nick... So you're it, going to have to rob from somewhere else to pay for this? Well, this I would call a robbery in itself because it's taking from the poorest people in London at the moment and right. that's unacceptable for any politician to tax the poorest and that's exactly what this tax is. Quick response from the caller, Dave. Your response to what you've heard from Susan Hall? Well, I just put a question, you know, she says um, that the poorest people are those, the, the poorest people actually are the ones who are suffering, who don't even drive a car, who have to suffer living in lethal air every day. Uh, Dave, I live in Harrow. We both know that the air quality in Harrow is, 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 is not as Sadiq Khan is portraying it. It's good. And if there are any pockets where there are if there is air pollution, councils can bid into that fund that I will put in place to deal with it. It could be a bus route. It could be a, a the way the um, the pavement's built out. It could even be that, not in Harrow because we've got rid of them, it could be um, an LTN, a low traffic neighbourhood, uh, because but they are causing nothing but pollution. And yet Sadiq Khan approves of those. You, you, lastly, you are aware a young woman in the London Borough of Lewisham living in Catford lost her life due to a toxic air in this city. Uh, it, and it's very sad, and um, I've spoken to her mother. It, it's very sad that anybody would lose their life, and, and bless her, she had very, very bad asthma. Um, I, I accept that, and that has happened. But equally, if you saw some of the emails, Nick, I'm getting from people that are now in a dreadful state because they don't know what to do, they can't get to but work, they can't get nothing gets near the life of a schoolgirl, does it? Um, it is a very sad situation that that young lady lost her life. I, I grant you that. But equally, we're now putting people in a position that that they don't know what to do with themselves. They're in a shocking state. And we're looking at outer London. Uh, outer London is a, has a different offer completely to inner London, and we, we both know that, Nick. There's a speech yesterday made by Home Secretary Suella Bratham, and yes, it was over yeah. in Washington, and it talked about the challenge of migration to the whole of Europe. It talked about how some people are finding it too easy. They can claim that they can get access to a country by claiming that they're homosexual, by saying that they're a woman. And she also said that uh, multiculturalism is a failed dogma. Um, surprised you haven't had sight of that, Susan. No, well, I was working till late last night, and I had so to. I. I guess, and I had to be up very early this morning. Okay, is multiculturalism a failed dogma? It, you see, we're in London. In London, multiculturalism is is a good thing. I mean, I absolutely uh, approve. When, when you say it's a, a good thing, you know, give, it, give me well, my list because it's it makes our it makes our city richer in so many different ways. Um, legal immigration is a really good thing and we need it for um, for, for jobs etc. Well our hospitals wouldn't run without but, it. Exactly but illegal immigration is wrong and that's what we really need to to deal with but in London we ha- we have got so many different communities and we benefit from that. Uh, and is it the challenge that the Home Secretary is saying a, a European and Western challenge hundreds of millions but not all seeking to get to the UK but do you see it as that challenge and what does it mean for London? Well, it, it is a challenge in as much as it's a massive uh, pressure on, on all the services. All right. um, and in London, of course, we've got a massive okay. housing problem. Personal question here. You mentioned safety on the streets. I hope you don't mind my asking this. Do you feel safe walking home in London at night? No, not anymore. What, what are your concerns? Uh, you ask most women. If, if you're walking along at night and you can hear somebody behind you, you think... Who's that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You do. And it's funny because I've, speak, I've spoken to men and they don't feel that. I, I spoke to a friend of mine and he said whenever he walks home from the pub drunk, he's not in the least concerned who's around him. He feels perfectly all right. 
women don't and I'm talking to young women in the office and they carry their keys with the, the sharp bit hanging up their hands so that you know <laughs> and the number of people I've said that to in various meetings and they say well I do that I do, do that uh, well since I heard that yes I did I hadn't thought about it but uh, you know you do feel far more threatened and the person behind you is almost certainly going to be fine. It's just at night and the echo of the, the, the steps and you look behind you and you think, ooh. When did this understandable nervousness start? I, I would say in the last five years I've been more concerned than I've been before. What would you do as mayor as regards policing? We, we, need, more, we need more of our officers on the streets. We have more. Where are you going to take them from? Well, they, I, I tell you what, so I keep asking the question, where are they? And one of the answers that came back to me last week or the week before was um, university. They're, they're seconded to university. I have, in all the years I've been dealing with the police, I have never heard that before. And I asked a, a senior officer, what's that, that all about? And she said, oh, well, yes, they're given time off to go to university. So I'm asking official questions because sometimes some of these units are 50% understaffed, not because there isn't staff there, but because they're off sick, they've been seconded to something else, they're, you know, they're pulled away from something else. I mean, you know, right. we, we've got to look at this and we've got to look at it seriously. We might 